Welcome back to another AECN chemistry lesson. This time we are going to be looking at balancing chemical equations. So a chemical equation has two parts, the reactants and the products. So we find the reactants on the left hand side of the arrow and the products on the right hand side of the arrow. So the reactants are what we are starting with and the products are what we end up with when the reaction has finished. A chemical equation is always balanced. There must be the same number of each kind of atom on both sides of your arrow. So for example, if there are two magnesium atoms on the left, there has to be two magnesium atoms on the right side of the arrow. What we see down here by the arrows are the small numbers that tell us how many of each atom we have in the compound. So for example, here we've got one hydrogen, one nitrogen, and three oxygens. So that is the subscript here. Here we've got two hydrogens, one oxygen. In this case, we've got one calcium, and then in a nitrate, we've got one nitrogen and three oxygens. But because of these brackets, we've got two nitrates. So two nitrogens and six oxygens. We've timed everything inside that bracket by two. When we are balancing a chemical equations, it's not like writing ionic formula. We can't use these subscripts or these small numbers here to add more or take away atoms from the ionic compound. Once you've written the ionic formula, that is it. The ionic compound is fixed. Instead, if we want to balance it, we have to write numbers in front of the ionic formula. Here we have magnesium metal or the magnesium element reacting with oxygen to form the ionic compound magnesium oxide. So this is probably one that you've done in class before where you take the magnesium strip and you put it in the Bunsen burner and it makes a really bright white light. And so this is the unbalanced equation for it. So we have one magnesium reacting with oxygen gas to form magnesium oxide. So one magnesium to one oxide ion. So in this case, magnesium gives its two valence electrons to the oxygen, and it then forms the oxide ion. So I find the easiest way to balance equations, especially when they get a little bit more difficult, is to use a table. So we have our reactants and our products, and then the atoms or the ions involved in the reaction. And so you just count up what is on the reactant side and what is on the product side. Here we've got one magnesium. We know there is only one as there's no number in front of it. So one magnesium, two oxygens, and then on the product side we've got one magnesium and one oxide. So our magnesiums are balanced, but our oxygens are not. So we can't just put a little two here. We're not writing ionic formula. If we did that, what we'd be saying is that for every one magnesium, there are two oxygens. And that's just not the case. We still have only one magnesium for every one oxide. So if we want to balance the magnesium oxide, we have to put the number in front of the entire ionic compound. So we want two oxide ions, so we have to have two magnesium oxides. So that means we've got two of the magnesiums and we've also got two of the oxides. So we've balanced our O's now, but in doing that, we've added an extra magnesium 
and we've made our magnesium unbalanced. So we now need two on the reactant side. And the only way we can do that is by adding a two in front of the reactant. So now what we've got is we've got two magnesiums reacting with our one oxygen molecule to create two magnesium oxide ionic compounds. And so now when we look at our table, it's balanced. And the table is a really good visual way to make sure that you've balanced everything. Because quite often when you balance one thing, it then makes something else go out of balance. Just like when we balanced our oxides, it made our magnesiums become unbalanced. But by using the table, we could visually see that and then go and balance them. All right, so we have a new one to look at now. So we've got magnesium reacting with hydrochloric acid, so a metal and an acid reaction. And it's turning into magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. So let's count up our reactants. We've got magnesium, hydrogen, and chloride. One magnesium, one hydrogen, one chloride. Now we've got one magnesium, but in this we've got two chlorides for every one magnesium. And we've also got two hydrogens. So now we can see that two out of our three are not balanced. So let's start with our hydrogens. We've got two on the product side, but only one on the reactant side. We need a second one on the reactant, so to have two in total. So we have to put a two in front of the entire compound. That means we've got two hydrogens, but we also have two chlorides. Now, if we look at our table, one magnesium, one magnesium, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two chlorides, two chlorides. So we are balanced. Perfect. Okay, so in this example, we're getting a little bit more complicated because now we have a polyatomic iron involved. So from a previous video, we looked at the polyatomic ions that we need to know, and this one is nitrate. And a polyatomic iron means that it's got more than one type of atom. So here we've got nitrogen and oxygen. And in this case, we've got three oxygens and one nitrogen. But what we notice is that the nitrate, the NO3, stays together on the reactant side and the product side. So let's not make it more complicated for ourselves. When we are writing what atoms we have, on the left-hand side of our table, we keep NO3 together, we keep the nitrate together. Otherwise, we're going to be counting oxygen atoms from the nitrate and the water and the calcium oxide, and it's going to make it much more complicated. But if you can see that it stays together on the reactant side and the product side, keep it together in the table. Okay, so let's start counting up. We have one calcium, one calcium. Remember the two means two of everything within the bracket. Calcium is not within the bracket, so we only have one calcium. Oxygen, so remember we're ignoring the NO3 oxygen, so the O3 over here, because that's part of our nitrate. So we have one oxygen. We have one oxygen, so so far we are balanced. All right, hydrogen, we have one hydrogen two hydrogens. So here we are not balanced. One nitrate, two nitrates. Again, we're going to start with our hydrogen. We have two on the product side, which means we need two on the reactant side. But we can't just put a subscript two. We have to have two of everything in that compound. So we need 
two hydrogens. We have two hydrogens, but we also have two nitrates. And now when we look at our table, we are balanced. So just by putting that one, two in front, we now have the same number of each type of atom on the reactant side as we do on the product side. So this is what is happening in real life. For every one calcium oxide, it reacts with two nitric acids to form one water molecule and one calcium nitrate. So in this example, we also have a polyatomic iron. We've got OH minus or the hydroxide polyatomic iron, but it's a little bit different this time because when we look at the product side, the OH minus has not stuck together. We don't have OH over here. So we can't keep it together in our table. So now when we write our atoms down the left hand side, we have to write magnesium. Magnesium. We've got to break up the hydroxide, the O and the H. So we've got O, we have H, and we have Cl or chloride. Those are our only atoms in this reaction. So let's count up the products and the reactants. One magnesium. Here the OH is in brackets, so we've got two oxygens. We've got two hydrogens here but we also have another hydrogen in the hydrochloric acid. So we have three hydrogens and we have one chloride. On the product side, two hydrogens, one oxygen, one magnesium and two chlorides. All right, so let's start by looking at our hydrogen. We've got three on the reactant side but only two on the product side so we have an uneven number and an even number. The problem is is that we can't balance this. We can't go one and a half hydrogens on our product side because we can't have half an atom. So what we need to do is turn both sides in this case into an even number. So we've got three hydrogens but we're going to want four. So let's put a two here. So now we've got four hydrogens on this side. We need four hydrogens on this side. Two times two is four. So we're going to have to put a two in front of the water as well. So now our hydrogens are balanced. And the other thing we've done is we've now added two chlorides to our reactant side and we've also added two oxygens to our product side because we have to times everything in this molecule by two. We are balanced 